Hello, welcome. My name is Claire Hunter. I'm Head of Marketing and Communications at Cold Tracker Ultrasonics. And I've been an active member of Renewable UK for some years and joined some of the offshore and onshore wind forums before. So thank you so much for listening. I'm now going to proceed towards my presentation. Do stay with me. I know it's a new format, but we're all getting used to this new COVID way. So I look forward to opening discussions with you at the end, and obviously we can get in touch in other ways. So as I said, we're going to be investigating the critical issue of fire safety. I'll be fanning the flame, so to speak, and trying to raise awareness of this burning issue. It's such a hot topic, but don't worry, I'll stop with the puns now. But it is a strange dynamic to try and speak to a computer rather than an audience, so we've got to try our best. I'm going to keep it short and share information not just from my own company research, but also from other industry experts and fire systems integrators and installers such as Firetrace and Reacton from the US and the UK respectively. My experience is nine years in the industry with Coltrack Ultrasonics and we are a UK manufacturer of ultrasonic technology. We won the Queen's Award last year for our work in international trade because we export to over 120 countries. We are active members of Renewable UK and our mission is to deliver the safe site by improving fire safety across the energy in industry, including renewable wind. I'd like to thank Renewable UK for inviting us today. Um, my special thanks to Hugh McNeil, the outgoing CEO for all of his support, and of course, to the wonderful Parrell for helping organize this event. I don't need to remind you of the exciting times we have in renewables. During this forum, you know, we're already speaking to the converted, but I thought it'd be good just to start us off by focusing on why we're here today. It was only recently that our own Prime Minister, Boris Johnson, said in a speech on the 6th of October that wind farms could power every home by 2030. We'll see. The energy matrix is changing and the industry is continuously driving towards initiatives that are greener, cleaner and more sustainable. Public support for renewable energy in the UK is consistently high, around 85%, and we are proudly leading the way in reducing our carbon emissions to fulfil the Climate Change Act of 2008. In this presentation, I'm going to unpick our CEO's message that you can see here on the screen about the drive towards a greener energy and why fire safety is critical as part of that move. Our dependence on renewables is thus growing, and as a result, the wind turbines being built are taller and more powerful. It's thus important and vital that we keep them fully operational, and we reduce the risks of lives loss and assets damaged in order to lead in this global movement. If we say there are over 340,000 turbines around the world, however, the vast majority do not have fire detection or suppression systems installed. And this is key. Why? Because of this first stat on the screen that fire is the second cause of accidents after blade failure. Another stat suggests that 10 to 30 percent of all loss of power generation is due to fire. And lastly, I think we have a great report from Fire Trace International, who have launched a recent report called In the Line of Fire which looks at the threat of wind farms amid changes in turbine technology. The stat report here is difficult to confirm, as Firetrace say, because of the lack of reporting and transparency around wind farm fires. However, their suggestion is that between one in 2,000 to one in 15,000 turbines might suffer a fire incident. These stats are further pulled from the industry press, such as Wind Power Engineering magazine, which estimates one in 2,000, and fire protection engineering suggests one in 10,000. So why do I say a safety culture? That's because these, some of these turbines are now surpassing 450 feet. They're in exposed locations, and therefore they pose a uniquely high risk and vulnerability to fire. The nacelles here comprise you know, highly flammable resins, and the internal insulation can be challenging too. When the turbines are under construction or engineers are undergoing maintenance and repairs, the escape routes are often long and vertical, which in the case of fire leads end ever greater danger. 
An example of the effects of such an event is that in September 2017, a wind turbine caught fire and sparked a wildfire in northeast Wyoming, and it burnt nearly 16,000 acres. Sorry, 1,600 acres. And the fire trace report I mentioned previously cites many others besides. We need to work collaboratively in our industry, and I think we do this pretty well already, so that we can find ways of ensuring we drive greener energy whilst minimising the dangers to engineers and the surrounding landscapes by enhancing our fire safety. So this is why I say we need a fire safety culture. I've worked in other industries, such as the maritime industry, where we already have a safety culture. We have a pledge, which can then lead towards a charter as companies get more comfortable with upholding the values and the aims of that. An example of this is the UK Chamber of Shipping, which is another association leading in their field. Perhaps we could see the same with Renewable UK, and I'd be open to discussing that with any of you. So back to looking at some stats, because I think that really helps to just bring it to mind as to the importance of what we're talking about. There are many ways to ensure, however, that these fires do not occur. The, the nacelle could be protected via very small gaseous fire suppression systems, which are fixed and look after it all year round. And we can rely on these systems to avoid total loss before the maintenance engineers can actually get them. These safety critical and dynamic systems, however, they must be tested and constantly monitored because of the high pressure gases that are inside each cylinder. Thus, we need quick, accurate, routine tests, which can make preventative difference. Ourselves at Colchaco, well, we offer specialist non-invasive liquid level measurement to actually test the contents of those fire suppression system cylinders, which are inside the nacelle, which is called a pulse level max. And it's actually used by Firetrace in some of their maintenance systems. So if we're looking at what are the solutions, we know in this room and in this forum that we're having that there's so much innovation and we can all club together to work out how we can best find solutions. As these fires continue to occur, however, there is a serious threat to both business continuity, our reputation as an industry, and of course, to human life. And yet they could be preventable. More and more wind turbine manufacturers are actually acknowledging the risk to assets and fire suppression systems are being retrofitted in existing sites or look to it for installation in new. We must continue to educate and to lead, ensuring that no more lives are lost and nor are any more critical assets damaged. There are smart solutions available that enable the wind turbine owners and operators to improve their fire safety management to reduce the threats to human life and to business continuity caused by any downtime, and hereby diminishing the risks and the costs involved. As just one case study here, this is, I'm going off our own experience. There are smart solutions available that enable wind turbine owners and operators to improve their management. And this is from our experience in 2017, when one of the world's leading wind turbine manufacturers spoke to their fire system manufacturer to ask for a solution for how to do better inspections. We worked on a number of projects with them and recommended our solution, our flagship Porter Level Max ultrasonic level indicator, which you can see here on the left. It was chosen for trials. It went through lots of different rigorous issues to make sure that it was going to be the best solution for their teams. And this is a mathematically accurate level indicator. It can identify the level to plus or minus 1.5 millimetres. And this unit was deemed to solve this fire the, the issues for the wind turbine manufacturer. And this is because it gives them the ability to regularly inspect and maintain the contents of their fire extinguishing systems, enables them to protect their valuable assets from substantial fire damage, as well as minimise the downtime for maintenance, ensuring the cylinders are always full and ready when required to extinguish fires. If we really want to make a global effort in leaning ever more towards renewables for our clean energy, we must make this recommendation a mandate and a requirement. If these kind of solutions are being used in existing power generation, why shouldn't they be used in wind? 
So to keep it short, because I'm aware of how difficult it is to listen to these PowerPoints from our, from our homes, I'd like to say what we wish to see in 2021. Firstly, it's got to be better than 2020 for many of us, and we hope that the everyday impact of COVID will have reduced by then. We hope that the UK government continues to include the push towards a green recovery. We hope to see increased recognition and sharing of best practice in the industry surrounding safety issues of all kind, and obviously specifically with fire safety. We want to see improved maintenance and new installations of fixed fire suppression systems and the recording of the servicing of these through simple technology, such as what we have with the port steel calculator. By next year, we hope that companies start demanding real-time diagnostics with complex constant monitoring of the fixed fire suppression systems, for example. The solutions are out there and it's a great time to start using the UK innovation we have. I welcome continuing the conversation with you by email, which is here below, um, or connect with me on LinkedIn. I'm also going to be manning our web chat on the website today, so please do come on to cultracker.com and discuss your thoughts. We really want to engage and promote safety culture at CA and on land because that is our safe site and safe ship mission. To provide technology to protect personnel, the critical assets, and of course the infrastructure. We're already supporting one of the top five wind turbine OEMs, and we've done that for several years worldwide. We are now in discussion with others too, such as in Brazil and India. So to wrap it up, we look forward to hearing more in other talks that there are going on today with the Onshore Wind Forum. Thank you, Renewable UK, for your wonderful work, and please keep it going. Thank you so much. Bye-bye.